Hi, my name is Omara and I'm a final year medical student at the University of Nottingham and if for those of you that didn't know, I just finished my medical school finals. Yes, it's five years of medical school finally over and so today I partnered up with Pass Test to give you a complete guide on how to pass your UK MLA exams as well as all the resources that I highly recommend. I'll be going over how the exam is structured, how to use active recall to prepare for the AKT exam, otherwise known as a knowledge paper, how to prepare for the CPSA exam, which are the equivalent of your OSCEDs, and quickly comparing the revision resources that are available out there, such as Pass Test, Pass Med, QuizMed, etc. By the time you see this video, I will have likely already published or be about to publish a video all about the differences between the new UK MLA exams and the old medical school final, so do check it out. But essentially the UK MLA exam is made up of two parts. The first is the AKT knowledge papers, which are two 100 mark single best answer multiple choice exams that you have to do in two hours. And each medical school will be selecting the questions they use from a central question bank that is provided by the UK MLA. The second part of the exam is a CPSA exam, the Clinical and Professional Skills Assessment which is very similar to your OSCEs, made up of obviously several stations where you'll be assessed on four domains. I can only remember three off the top of my head. Clinical reasoning, communication skills, professionalism, I can't remember the other one. And that will basically involve histories, procedures, examinations, documentation and prescribing stations. So let's have a look at how we can use Active Recall to revise for these AKT knowledge papers. Online you can find the UK MLA content map which lists the 250 presentations and over 400 conditions that you need to know for medical school finals. You'll be expected to know the clinical signs and symptoms, the diagnostic criteria, what investigations to carry out and the management of these conditions. Now, I've said many times before that research has shown that you need to hear a fact five to seven times before it transfers from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. And active recall using question banks like Pass Test, Pass Med, Quiz Med are the only way you will be able to achieve this at medical school. There's seriously no place for note-taking, textbook reading in medical schools anymore. Now, the way you approach using question banks and these online revision platforms will change as you progress through medical school. So I've split this up into three stages to help you understand how you should be revising at each stage within medical school. Now, if you have only just started placement, it may be quite frustrating to do questions on topics that you don't understand very well. And I would recommend that you do questions specific to the attachment that you're on. So if you're doing mental health or like pediatrics for the first time, then do pediatric specific questions. And if you're new to a placement, you may find it beneficial to filter by difficulty, which Pass Test allows you to do. Pass Test also has an inbuilt textbook which you can refer to. So let's say a question comes up on croup, you've never heard croup before, you can refer to their essential revision notes to find out more about the diagnosis, investigations, management, pathophysiology of croup, and then go back to the question. And that way you're learning from your mistakes and you're refreshing your knowledge as you complete more and more questions. What I really like about past us as well is that it breaks down each of the answer options and explains to you why you got a certain question wrong. That way you can learn from your mistakes. I have definitely found that the best way to learn while revising is to get things wrong because when you're able to read the explanations, you remember it better the next time. A bonus tip that I have is that if there are any conditions or management plans that you're finding really hard to commit to memory, then I suggest you actually spend a bit more time and make your own revision resource to help you memorize that topic. Now, some of the things that I really struggled to commit to memory were the A to E assessments and management of different acute conditions from anaphylaxis to epilepsy to drug overdoses. So I went onto PowerPoint and I wrote out an A to E assessment and management for each of these conditions using resources like the inbuilt textbooks on past tests nice guidelines, zero to finals. It is 10 times easier to memorize something that's been written in your own words. But I still recommend using Anki to make your own flashcards on any topics that you find difficult to memorize and you just want to have extra practice and more questions on it than you'd find on an online question bank. And close to finals, I found it really helpful to make mind maps to help me remember the presentations that the MLA content map expected me to know. For example, there are many different differentials to headache, from meningitis to migraines, that Creating a mind map really helps you to visualize and learn before the exam. As you progress through your attachments, it is very important that you stay up to date with knowledge from previous rotations. So although the bulk of your time will be allocated to learning new content from each of your rotations, set aside one to two days a week to go back and do questions from the specialties you have already completed. Pass this allows you to do this very easily because you can simply just filter questions by specialty. My bonus tip is to use the traffic light system to highlight any topic 
projects that you are really struggling with and you need to spend some extra time on. For example, what I suggest you do is that you download the Excel version of the UK MLA content map and then you highlight in red the topics that you feel really terrible at, yellow, so-so and green that you feel more confident in. During those one to two days that you've set aside to go back through old topics, why don't you go through the red conditions first, do some questions on them, the yellows will hopefully become green and you'll feel prepared for your final exams. And finally, if you're on stage three of the revision timeline, then it means that finals are just around the corner. At this point, it is very important that you do mock papers and past test has lots of mock papers for you to try, but I would suggest that you actually get memberships for several online revision platforms, perhaps like Pastest and Quizmed, because honestly, the more revision papers, the better. My medical school only gave me one mock paper and that is simply not enough for your final. So definitely shop around and get as many as you can. I suggest that you leave about two, three months and maybe do them fortnightly or weekly if possible. And don't forget to learn from your mistakes. If you get a question on, let's say, the management of renal stones, Go back and look at the essential revision notes, look at the inbuilt textbook or look at your Anki cards on how you'd manage renal stones and then tr look at the question again and think, would I be able to get it right now? And then move along and repeat the process for every question that you got wrong. As you go through each attachment, you'll be expected to learn histories, examinations, and procedures relevant to that attachment. For example, in trauma and orthopedics, you'll be expected to carry out joint examinations. Now, the only way I found helpful to revise and prepare for the CPSA or OSCE exams was to make my own resources. This is because I found that different resources out there outlined a different approach to these histories and examinations. And I knew that my medical school expected me to do it very specifically, or that they placed a lot more importance on some aspects than the revision resources resources did. I also found that by doing my own revision resources I could actually include the photos of the different clinical signs that I'd be looking for and any tips and tricks that allowed me to complete the examination a little more easily. Now what I didn't do too well that I recommend that you guys do is once you make these resources commit them to memory and then every time you're on placement practice following that same structure because that way when you get to exams it will feel like second nature and once you're in the run-up to exams it is essential that you practice OSCE stations with your housemates or with any friends or family. Past test makes this really easy to do because they have about 100 OSCE stations to choose from and not only that they include mark schemes, which I relied on heavily because I don't live with any medics. So luckily by giving them, by giving my housemates the mark schemes, they would be able to mark me and tell me where I went wrong or what I needed to improve. I also really recommend Geeky Medics if you're making your own revision resources, but also I recommend their OSCE um, membership simply because you can build your own circuit. So in the run up to exams, I found it really helpful to build a circuit that emulated what the OSCE exam would be like. So it would have an A to E, exam in there because I knew that would come up or it'd have um, a history or an examination in there so I recommend Geeky Medics as well. In summary, there are many revision resources to choose from and many medics like myself will choose to use a hybrid and combination of these revision platforms. But if you are looking to save your money and looking to rely on only one resource in order to revise from, then I really recommend Pass Test because they are the only revision resource that not only has the inbuilt textbook and question bank and mock papers, but they also have OSCE revision resources built in. So they'll have mock OSCE stations and videos on how to complete different procedures. And they have built-in PSA questions as well, which is really helpful because in your final year, you also have to sit the PSA, but that's a different story for a different day. Good luck with your journey in becoming a doctor.